Um, do you think a normal 15-year-old girl would get up and go to something that dangerous? I, I sat on a train and I couldn't believe her. after they went, I sat on a tube train and I heard yeah. four or five other young girls thinking of doing the same thing. You heard them yes, say this? Yes, I heard them say it on the tube and I was totally shocked. In, on a London train? On a London subway. With all the craze about Shamima Begum, the 15-year-old ISIS bride who left London to go and join the terrorist organization had three kids in a Syrian refugee camp, all of which who unfortunately died. Now she wants to come back after ISIS has been dissolved, but of course her citizenship has been taken away. I thought I'd take to the streets to find out what Londoners, actual Londoners, think about this entire situation. Should she come back? Should she be shown mercy? Or should she stay out? This is what they said. I feel she is our responsibility. We need to hold her accountable in, our, in her own country. Do you think that they took away that part of her identity? Do you think a government should be allowed to do something like that? No, never, because it's, uh, it's definitely right. What about the fact that she went to join an enemy like ISIS? That's the thing. Uh, that's quite questionable, in my belief, mm. because she was just 15 years old. Mm. So you don't have any maturity to do that, you know? So 15 years old, come on. Some people say that she's yeah, only 15. I don't 15. care. When I was 15, I was in the park. I was getting two quid for an energy drink. <laughs> but you're out, mate. I wasn't right. joining ISIS. I was kicking a ball about yeah, it. Yeah. Ladies, if you had one message for Shamima Begum. She's somebody who obviously made a huge mistake. Now she's expressing remorse and she's lost three children in infancy. The last one died at 18, years, uh, 18 days old uh, in her arms in the Syrian camp. What would you say to her? I'm sorry, but you shouldn't have gone there in the first place. So. Yeah, I do have sympathy for her, though. Mm. Losing three kids, you know, yeah. it must be sad. Yeah, it's, but hard, it's hard, sad thing to go you through. You made but... the choice to go there. You didn't have to go there. Yeah. Over the weekend, there was a huge peace conference. The leader of tens of millions of Muslims, uh, the caliph of the Muslims, he said... This issue started at that time. Our stance was that uh, she should be allowed to come to the country for the sake of the child. She should be tried in the court. Unfortunately, it is said the child has expired now. So now it is up to the government. That now that her child has passed away mm -hmm. and the British government has rejected her, she should go back to her parents' country, Bangladesh. Yeah. Or if she claims to be a Muslim, mm -hmm. even though what she did is not Islamic, a Muslim country should take her. She has been denied the right of being a citizen of the country. Then, now, other Muslim countries should take her. What do you think about this? Do you agree? Yes, definitely agree. Definitely 100%. That's the right way it should have went about. That should have been at the start. To be honest, she's British. Um, she should be allowed back here. She should be tried here. Because she identifies as a Muslim, he yeah. says that a Muslim country should take her. Yeah. What do you think about that? No, I, I, I perfectly agree. Says? And at the end of the day, that's right. And I agree that the parents have got to take responsibility for children now as well. Do you agree with the Caliph? that some Muslim countries should at least take her in so she's not stateless. Yes. Yes. Uh, a statement that was made by the caliph of tens of millions of Ahmadi Muslims, peace-loving Ahmadi Muslims. Yeah. He said just a few days ago that okay, if Britain doesn't uh, take her in, we have to respect that decision. Yeah, and yeah, that yeah. Bangladesh, which is where her parents are from, where she's originally from, in, they should yeah. take her in or some Muslim country should take yeah, her in. Do you agree yeah. with what yeah, the caliph yeah. says? Yeah. Someone will yeah. take her in, do you know what I mean? That's, yeah, that's their, but like, like, not here. If you're trying to hurt people here, you're not coming here. He described integration as people coming from other countries, as you said, respecting the laws of the land and making positive and long-lasting contributions. Do you agree right. with what the Caliph said? I totally agree with that. They can unindoctrinate her and teach her the true teachings of Islam, at least? I would, I would like to think that is a possibility. Let her see the positive side of Islam. Yeah. Let us see that yeah. because she doesn't understand something, you know? Absolutely. And we can't teach it to her because we can't say this is how it is. Mm. You all have got to tell her this is what it is. Absolutely. This is the best of what it is. And, exactly. And, and, that's, and that's why I always think, why do they not speak up? I always wait to hear that voice. Islam never says that uh, you should uh, commit such brutalities. Which, is, which are being done by Daesh or any extremist group. It turns out that London really is the metropolitan of variety that it claims to be. With so many different views, it seems almost impossible to be united. One thing's for sure though, Londoners have an open heart. 
They don't want to see people suffer and they definitely are a tolerant country especially when it comes to the views of the Caliph of the Ahmadiyya Muslim community. It was overwhelming to see what support people have regarding his statements and how sensible this country is with regard to situations as precarious and delicate as terrorism and extremism.